by the art of illustration. That's a long time, any way you look at it. During the years, I've changed my style and viewpoint many times. You have to if you're going to survive. I started as an artist in 1898 on a newspaper in Canada, and in four years saved enough to study a while at the Art Students League in New York, and at the same time made a little money doing comic drawings for Life and Judge. Later, I started illustrating for the Saturday Evening Post, and I worked for that magazine over 40 years. My best-known pictorial character is that kind old lawyer, Ephraim Tuck. That series ran in the Post for over 25 years. I think I've worked for practically every well-known magazine during my career. Another long assignment was the Claudia series of stories and red books. To be a successful illustrator, you must have a great interest in people, how they should live and feel, be interested in everything in life, and have a lively imagination, and also be quick to keep up with the changing times. I think I was one of the first to realize the advantages of the camera. With it, you get natural attitudes, telling expressions, and quick accidental poses that a model couldn't hold long enough for the artist to get on paper. Today, with a few exceptions, every illustrator uses the camera in some way. We don't copy the photograph, we use it as a guide. I've tried to make my illustrations realistic and exciting enough to create emo emotion in the minds of the readers, so they will be anxious to read the story. If I were giving advice, I would say, be sincere in your work. If you admire the work of a great illustrator, learn from him, but don't imitate. You won't last long if you do. Create your own style. Be individual. Make your signature plain so that it becomes a trademark to readers. And if you really want to be popular, make your girls beautiful. Then you can't move. <laughs>